Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett and as you can see I'm not in my workshop today. Today I'm over at Paul's workshop and many of you have been asking, some of you for years, uh, different questions about CNC machines and laser cutters and I try and answer as much of those as I can by email but it really takes a review of looking at different things. So today I'm with the expert Paul and we're going to look a brief look at CNC machines and laser cutters and we're going to start off at the CNC machine so let's go over there Paul. Yeah, let's go and play with that. Perfect. Awesome. Well here we are in front of Paul's CNC machine. Now this is a medium size one. You can get them bigger and you can get them smaller. And this is what we call a hobby machine. If you're doing production you would get a, a much uh, more robust machine um, and you can get them even smaller than this. Most of these uh, CNC machines run on a uh, basically a palm or a trim router and you've seen me do videos on that but the first thing you need to do when you're do cutting anything is either import a file and there's lots of those or you can design your own which is what Paul has done today so Paul can you show us how this control software works all right this is Carbine Create it actually comes as a free software with the Shiboko 3 which is the CNC machine we have so over here you got a design tab and this is where you can basically design uh, most basic projects. It doesn't do anything too complicated but things like cutting boards or clocks and stuff like that. No problem doing it all here. So you'd lay it out like any other design software. You got circles, squares, you know, text if you wanted to put it in and also you can import your design. So for example if you had a guitar vector or something you want to bring it in you can just import it here and slap it right in here. So it does do importing too. But one thing I want to talk about here is you'll see these little things here. These are tabs and we're going to show you what tabs do in a second here but just so you're in case you're wondering what that is so once you're done laying it out you go over to the tool paths and that's where you tell how you want each one of these cut out so this one's going to be a curve so it's just going to be a round over on the edge of the board this is going to be the groove that goes around your cutting board the kind of gravy groove I guess you'd call it and this will be the final cut now once you have set up all your uh, cuts here the great thing is you can actually give yourself a simulation of kind of how, what it's going to look like. So you just click that and give it a second and there you go. And there's your project. So you can move it into a 3D space and have a look in. You can zoom in and out of course if you wanted to. Now you can now see the tabs in there and the tabs of course keep everything in place. So obviously you don't want your project flying away at you while you're cutting it. So this is what our project is going to look like. Hopefully, if we've done everything right, we are going to get two cutting boards uh, out of this piece of wood. I like that you can do that because you, when you create one, it's as easy to create two with this. Yep. Uh, once it's in there, it's in there. You don't have to. You can create them a hundred times over. It's really great if you want to mass produce something, obviously. So for a lot of you guys that are doing farmer markets and stuff, especially I see a lot of guys with uh, cutting boards, this is a great way to kind of produce a lot of them at the same time. And while the machine's running, of course, you can be off sanding your other boards and doing other projects. It's like having someone else in the shop. Now that you've designed it, Paul, what's the next step? All right, the next step is we want to bring this over to our other software program that comes for free and that's called Carbine Motion. That controls the CNC machine, tells it where to basically cut. And we're going to go over here to Carbine Motion and we're going to hit Connect Cutter and it's now connected to the machine. As you can see back over here we now have the ability to send the code over to the machine. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to disable these two codes. We're going to be changing out bits. So we only want to send over this curve out bit, which is going to be a round over bit. And then we'll, of course, then disable that one. So if you, we had them all active, it would send all the codes over at once. So we're just going to do this code right now. And then we could look at what bits we're going to do. So we've sent it over there. It should be, it sets loaded here. It's got the template. Now we can actually sit there and we can, it's going to ask us to begin homing. So let's bring it over to the machine so we can have a look at that. Okay. Now Paul's going to make these cutting boards using three different bits. So could you tell us what you're going to do, Paul? All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this round over bit here. And this is going to give a round over edge to the edge of the cutting board. All right. After that's done, we're then going to cut the little gravy channel, I think you call it. And all we're going to use is an end mill that has a round end over it. Then to cut out the whole project, what we're going to do is we're going to use a down cut bit. 
So a down cut bit basically uh, leaves a clean cut on top while leaving kind of the more messy part at the bottom. And this is the reason you use a down cut bit as compared to a normal cutting bit. Yep, good. Yeah. Now I think the next thing you need to do is center the bits on this little X that's down here. Yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize the machine and yep. then we're going to center it on this little bit here. And uh, well, first let's install these bits and then we'll do that and we'll uh, show you how we center the machine and okay. everything. Okay, good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to home the machine, which is basically the machine wants to know where its top right hand corner is. So this is the homing process right now. All right, so now that it has its home, next thing we're going to do is we want to tell this machine where center is. So we got center right there. We've already marked it out. Okay. So we're going to jog this over. How's it looking about there, Colin? Yep, look, All right. Good. I'm going to go down and just, just until we touch the wood. All right, and it looks like we got center right there. Okay. So I might even bring it down just a tiny bit. There we go. So that's center. What we're going to do is on the machine, just tell that's where zero is. And that's so the machine knows where the center of the work piece is because it has no other way to know where it's working. So once we've set zero, we are good to go. So what we can do now is we can basically get ready to fire up the machine. One of the first things we're gonna do, now this is an add-on for your machine that Colin has there. You're gonna add the, the dust. This, this the dust collector boot, right? Yep. So this uh, goes on like this, and this saves you a lot of effort of having to clean up your shop. It just slides up under like this, and once this is on, it turns on, uh, you turn on your shop back, and you're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up the process here. First thing we're going to do is I'm just going to hit run here on my uh, software, and it's going to bring this up, and then we're going to turn everything on, and then you guys can watch a, I guess, a fast forward of the first round over cuts. All right, so as you can see, we've cut the round over here for the edge of the boards. So the next thing I've moved on to is this kind of round over end mill bit here. This is what's going to cut the gravy trough around the boards. So I've already gone on and uh, centered the bit and everything, so it's all zeroed up. So we're basically ready to cut with it. I've already loaded it into the program. So let's put the dust boot on there, Colin, if you can. And I should just slide on just like that. Turn on the machine here. All right, as you can see, we've gone ahead and got the gravy or juice trough cut there. It did two passes, as you can see, because we did want an extra deep little juice trough. I went ahead and I've also now installed the final down cut bit. So this will actually cut out your project for you. So this will be the final step. I guess let's go ahead and do that and we'll be back when it's all done cutting. Ready for the shroud, yeah. the dust shroud? Put the dust shroud on there, Colin. Okay. All right. Well, we were a little optimistic with this uh, very tiny round over uh, and the cutting actually uh, sort of dis disrupted it all the way around. So Paul's put in a little bit bigger round over bit. So we're going to do the outline again with a little bit bigger bit so we get that round over. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, we're all finished. So the last thing to do on this project is we need to do is, uh, is to release the tabs. That's kind of what's holding these cutting boards in place. So there's tabs here and all these little corners here. We're going to sit there and we just need to cut them out. So to do that, I use a simple saw on an, on an oscillating tool. Yeah, yeah. And we just uh, go in there and we'll just snap them all out. Okay. So there I don't we know go. If I did them. Yep. Yeah, here's a little need a little cleaning up. So here's the cutting boards. They're all finished basically, right? So now we got to do obviously do a final sanding on them, clean them up a bit, and then we'll be back and we're gonna do some lasering on these guys. So uh, let's get sanding here, Colin. Oh okay, great, my favorite job. Yep. <laughs> and here we are at the laser, and we're going to do a little bit more work on this. And laser is not something we always think about in a woodwork shop, but Paul's got a program here that he's going to run on this. Why don't you go ahead, Paul, and show us what we're doing here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to burn the Woodwork Web logo into this cutting board to kind of customize it. Uh, we're going to use a program here called K4 Whisperer. So we're just going to line that all up. So the first thing we're going to do is just fire up the laser. Let it go off to its corner there. And then we're just gonna take it and we've already made a center mark because of the, to, there. So we're just gonna walk it over to the center mark. I'm just gonna slowly walk it over there. All right, so I've moved the laser over to the midpoint. Uh, right now it's set up and ready to burn the logo into it. And we are ready to go. So let's burn this and see what it looks like. We're all done here, so yeah, this is the finished one. product. I'll get it up for you guys oh, there so you can have wow. a better look there. That's awesome. Look at that on that cutting board. Uh, all of it done by digital equipment. Uh, the new way of woodworking. Yep, so there we go. This is a custom board. Let's clean it up a bit and then we'll be back and uh, we'll kind of show you guys the cleaned up boards and stuff and what other products these you can do with these. That little bit of hazing that you see on there, uh, with a little bit of sanding, we clean that up and get a really nice sharp image. So let's give yeah. that a whirl. All right, awesome. Let's do that. Well, that concludes my video for today. And I want to thank Paul for helping me and showing you all of the detail. And in fact, I'm going to put a link to Paul's channel because he's got some beginner series on CNC and lasering. Uh, if you're interested at all in it, you'll find it very fascinating. And some of the other things he's brought out to show me as well. For example, on the CNC machine, uh, he's made this guitar. Um, but there's all sorts of different things. You know, it doesn't have to be signs and, and logos. You know, you can also make uh, things. This is a stand for doing work on different things. Star Wars medallion yeah. and the detail. So there's lots of really neat things. And you know what? This kind of woodworking is not for everybody. But for those of you who have been asking about CNC and about lasering, are they part of woodworking? Of course. It's all fun. You know, that's why we do woodwork is for the enjoyment of it. And some people sway one way and other people like to do something like this. So for those of you who are interested, I hope this answers some of your questions. Don't forget, the article will have even more detail on Woodwork Web. So thanks again, Paul. It's no been problem. Uh, great uh, seeing all this and, and visiting your, your workshop. Yeah. And you can find me over at Maytech. Perfect. I'm Paul Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. See you guys.